Joe Finn standing by with NFL Films, Greg Cosell. Greg, you're here at 49ers headquarters working on the season preview for the 2017 season. You've been doing a lot of these. You've been at NFL <laughs> Films for 30 years. And so what in particular excites you about this project right now? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I've done a lot of what they call new coach, new approach films. And some of them become very cookie cutter, very ritualistic. The one thing that really has stood out, and, and I've been here now two days, which really stood out is just there's an excitement and energy, a vibe in this building on the practice field, the spirit, the competition. You can palpably feel it. And I think it's something that is pretty exciting. Look, it's a team we know that was 2-14 and 14 last season. No one, I'm sure, is talking about Super Bowl in 2017. But this is a team you, you can almost feel a different kind of energy and electricity that is really, I'm sure, getting everybody locally excited so much of that has to do with general manager john lynch you actually just had a chance to sit down with yep. him and so what makes him different obviously we won't know if he's better for years to come but what makes him different as it stands right now than other general managers around the league i can't speak for everyone but i can tell you this about john and i knew him a bit when he played First of all, he's a really smart guy, and he's really intellectually curious, which I think is really important in any position where you're in charge. And then, of course, the kind of player that he was, which speaks to the kind of person he is, and that's the kind of guy where you do everything right all the time, and you do it with an intensity, you do it with a passion, you just do things the right way all the time. And I think that is so critical, because part of that then becomes accountability, responsibility, the understanding that it's a team game. I just think I think he has such a good feel for the subtleties of what's required on a daily basis. And then, of course, that translates to playing games on, on Sunday, and that's what's critical in this league. The other side of the coin is Kyle Shanahan, who will be leading the team on Sundays on game day. And so how do you think he makes the transition from one of the most prominent coordinators in the NFL to a first-year head coach in the NFL? Well, the great thing about Kyle, number one, is I think as an offensive mind and play caller, you could easily make the argument that he's the best in the NFL. And I know he's going to be calling the plays here in San Francisco, and he is just the absolute best in the league at this point in time. I can see plays in my mind right now, just last year, where we'd sit and watch and go, wow, what a great play call against that defense. He's really, really good at that. And obviously, because of his dad, he has a very good sense and a very good feel for what being a head coach is all about and all the responsibilities and demands that go with being a head coach. So I think when you put those two things together, you're probably looking at one of the young rising stars in the head coaching profession. It started with free agency, a number of calculated players added to this roster with the Pierre Garcons, Brian Hoyer, uh, Kyle Juszczyk, and then you go into yeah. the draft. We spoke at the Combine previewing some of those prospects. Now that we know it's Solomon Thomas, Reuben Foster, among uh, eight others, what do you make of the new players on this roster and the competition right, that it adds right. to the, uh, the practice field? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I've been talking to a lot of people. It, it, it's almost crazy to me, but you could almost argue that Kyle Juszczyk is as important a signing as anybody because you look back at what Kyle Shanahan did in Atlanta last year, and he had the fullback there, Patrick DeMarco. He played 30% of the snaps, which is almost unheard of in today's NFL. So you look at Kyle Juszczyk, who's the best fullback in the NFL. Probably not a lot of people talk about him. Maybe they do out here, but around the league, they probably don't. He's going to play 30-35% of the snaps. He's the best fullback in the league. He's a terrific receiver. That's a signing that is so, so important. But they brought in guys. Brian Hoyer had great success with Kyle in 2014 in Cleveland. Pierre Garçon played for two years with Kyle when Kyle was in Washington. Players who understand Kyle's system and want want to play in his system. That's the key thing. These are players who couldn't wait to get back to playing with Kyle Shanahan because they love his offensive approach. And then with the draft, going into it, I think they had the perception of you come away with Solomon Thomas, you're happy with it. They come away wow. with Solomon Thomas and Reuben Foster. What's your takeaways from the draft? in well, terms of what they accomplished. I can only tell you how I evaluated the players. And I, to me, Reuben Foster was the second best prospect in the entire draft. If you put on the tape of Reuben Foster, Reuben Foster is as good a linebacker prospect as we've seen in recent years. And then when you look at Solomon Thomas, Solomon Thomas, a high, high-level prospect. And what I think that John Lynch would really like and why they drafted him, you're dealing with a John Lynch kind of player in terms of the person, the commitment, and the passion. Do you feel like you can see the culture changing? in this organization being here a couple of days? Well, I can feel it just being in the building. And again, we're in the honeymoon period. We haven't played any games. As I said, I don't think anybody's expecting 2-14 and 14 to become 14-2. and two, But you just want to see this now, the process start to play out. And I think you will definitely see it turn.